One thing I forgot to do that will make this look a lot better since it's just kind of gray and generic. If we go up here into the, uh, the material type, which I believe is under default, uh, if you type the letter W, it takes you down to the W's, and we can have this as different kinds of wood. And I think we might just go with yellow pine. This is going to be made out of uh, construction lumber, so pine works fine. Let's save the middle. Let's do the same thing. If we go back to open with the bottom, and I do need you to open the bottom anyway. So go ahead and do that. Change this to yellow pine. Save it. And then go up to your big eye. Save as. And we're going to call this one top. Okay? Now we're going to make an assembly file. So up here, there's a little down arrow. Go to assembly. And in our assembly, we're going to put the bottom, middle, and top pieces in place. Let's say place, bottom, middle, top. I can select all three by holding down control. And if I click on the screen, it'll adjust it to be the right size. Okay. This is the top, so I'm going to set that one off to the side. The bottom's going to go under here. So I'm going to say constrain. And now you have a mate constraint, which will take this little arrow and this little arrow and snap them onto each other. Okay. And to rotate my screen, I'm holding down shift and my mouse wheel at the same time. And Well, at least I should be. But... Uh, when I'm taking video, it doesn't like doing that. So I'm just going to grab this view cube and rotate that way instead. Can zoom in. Now those two arrows are facing each other. I'm going to hit apply. And I want to make a flush constraint, which means that this side and this side are pointing the same direction. And if I rotate this thing around, I'm also going to make a flush constraint with this side and this side. And hit apply. Okay, so now the bottom is in place. The top is not yet in place. All right. And um, when we do this in the shop, we're actually going to tape these two pieces together and drill down through this hole. And because it's difficult to see that on here, well, we can still do it that way. Let's do it that way. I'm going to say constrain. I want this to be touching this face, so I mate them together, and then apply, switch to flush, and I want this side to be flush with this side, which means the two arrows point the same direction. See the two arrows? One, two. I'm going to do the same thing with this side and this side to make sure they line up. Okay. Now, I'm going to double click on this top piece. Well, I have to exit out the top piece first. I'm going to exit any open pieces that I have, actually. So I only have this assembly file. Nothing else is open down here. I'm going to double click my top piece. And I'm going to say New Sketch. I'll right click, New Sketch. But I want to use this other piece as a reference. I'm going to project the geometry of this piece. Which is not doing very well for me right now. There we go. I want that little bump to be projected onto this top piece. So I'm going to finish my sketch. Or no, I'm not going to finish my sketch. I'm going to go to my top view. I'm going to put a point right there. I'm going to make that point into a hole. That hole needs to be, um, I believe it's 3 eighths in diameter. So 0.375. And it has a depth distance of 1 inch deep. Now, unfortunately, when I do it like that on here, I don't think it's actually going to cut into this piece. And it did not. But we can still double click on this middle, go into New Sketch. 
we can project the geometry of that hole that's already there, make a new point. This would be like marking it, how I mark it, so you can go to the drill press and know where to drill. That's what point does. And we are going to make a hole with the same kind of constraints. This is 0.375. And instead of it being one inch deep, the lid has a thickness of 0.375. So say minus 0.375. And Inventor does the math for you. Okay. It should be uh, 0.625, but not all of you want to do math this early in the morning. So let's click return. And now you should have a hole that goes one inch down through this part. Um, let's go and click on this top piece. We are going to delete our two flush constraints. And instead, oh, for some reason it still thinks it's locked in place. You know why? Because we have these adaptive parts. If we right click on it and uncheck adaptive, adaptive means that we modified it after we made the part. And then we can just grab it and drag it off. We're going to put a different kind of constraint on here. We're going to mate the axis of these two holes. So we still have the, the mate that the two faces had to face each other. We're also going to mate the axis and now when we go to grab this and drag it, it will pivot open and close. And it's kind of annoying to see the whole thing bounce around. So if you grab one of these bottom pieces and right click and hit grounded. And now the top piece just pivots open and close. We're going to stop there. I'm going to show you how to make the dowel pin and put that in place.